Hi, my name is Lane McCall, and today we're going to take a look at camera cages and shoulder rigs for your filmmaking needs. With so many camera rigs on the market today, it can be really hard to choose which rig is going to best fit your filmmaking needs. Hopefully with this video, I can help show you what to look for and things that you might want inside of your camera rig. In front of me today, I've got four rigs that I personally own and I've used for the past few years of my filmmaking career. And I'm gonna show you the things that I like and dislike about all of them and hopefully help steer you in the right direction. So starting off with the Tilta EST-17A camera cage, this cage is awesome. However, it is dedicated to the Sony A7 line of cameras. So if you're not shooting with that line, this cage is probably not gonna be for you. However, it's a cage that I use and I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the things that I like and dislike about it. So starting off with just the molding of the cage itself, it's flawless, it's lightweight aluminum, and they've got probably over 100 holes drilled into the top, bottom, and side of this cage. So if you're wanting modularity, you're gonna get it with this cage. You can attach monitors, other external recorders, microphones, or just about anything else you want to this cage. The battery dropout in the bottom is definitely big enough. I have no problem bringing my battery in or out of there. Whenever I'm sliding the camera in, everything fits. It's nice, tight, and compact. Another thing that I really like about this camera cage is the way that they have the HDMI cable protectors. These are nice and secure on the side, and I've also got it mounted where it swings out on the top. And the HDMI out allows easier access to my Shogun recorder that I usually keep on the side. So the, uh, the cable protection definitely needs to be there if you're shooting on this line of cameras, because as you know, they use that little micro uh, HDMI port, and you know that can get damaged easily. So knowing that they included this stuff, and they also included the cable with the purchase of this cage, that's pretty cool. So moving on to the Rosewood grip that has a start and stop button that is also um, available for use with the red cameras. That's pretty cool. Um, this is great if you're you know, recording handheld and you're kind of weighed down with everything that's on the cage, you go ahead and just start recording and stop from right there. It's got the rosette adapter that's easily adjustable. So you know that that rosette is really sturdy and it's gonna stay in that position once it's locked down. Moving on to the lens support. The lens support here is, you know, most common for you guys coming from the Canon line of cameras. A lot of y'all have those Metabone adapters or you might have another third party adapter, but they should all work with this support and they include those little screws that thread into the bottom and they support the bottom of that uh, lens support that you have. So it's really cool to know that this is built in. Now, I don't need that because I shoot with the Sony E-mount, you know, 2.8 glass, which brings me into my next thing that I really love, which is this lens support right here. Now, this lens support does not actually come with this cage. It's just one that was kind of like built specifically for it. Um, it matches, you know, same color tone and whatnot. But this is really nice and lightweight and it's very sturdy. It helps support that 2.8 glass that I got. And um, it's definitely something you might want to consider if you're shooting with long lenses that have a lot of weight to them. So as I snap it back in here, we're going to go ahead and move on to the top handle. Um, as you guys know, you can go ahead and turn this you know, sideways to fit your needs. One thing that I really like about this cage that I give the most applause for is actually the portability and the quick access functions for this. As you can see this top handle, if I'm mounting you know, a monitor or something that's gonna be in the way, look how easy I just removed that top handle. Now I can go ahead and throw on there whatever it is I need to throw on there. As I unlock this cage here, I'm gonna take it out and just like that, I'm already back to handheld shooting if the base is locked down on a tripod. Now this is free to go onto a slider, a camera crane, or any other thing that you got rigged up. So having this come off quickly is definitely a huge plus when you're on those bigger shoots and you have more rigs to choose from. Another cool function about the rig that I don't actually use, but it's cool to know that it's there, is the little locking lever on the side is actually used to snap into Tilta's dovetail base plate that they sell on their website. So like I said, I don't use it, but it's nice to know that it's there. You know, it makes it, um, it makes easier access whenever you're unmounting and mounting it to a tripod. So that pretty much wraps up everything that I like about the cage. 
Now I'm gonna dive into the things that I don't like. And honestly, there's not a lot, guys. The biggest gripe I have about this cage is actually just this little 15 millimeter rod support that is supposed to be attached on the top. As you guys can see, there is a little thread in the middle and there's these two little pins on the side and there are only one, two, three mounting holes where this can go on this cage. Now you're like, well, you can just remove that HDMI at the top. And that is absolutely true. I can move that off, I can attach this, and then I can put my Shogun on the side like I stated earlier in the video. The only problem with that is this could have easily worked if they would have just machined this a little bit differently. Because you could actually attach this HDMI cable right here. It's just the corners meet. I've already contacted Tilta about it, just kind of letting them know um, they didn't even get back with me, so I don't know if their support's gonna be, you know, all that great. However, that's about the only gripe I have about this cage. And if that's my only gripe, that means this is probably a pretty good cage. This cage is only for the Sony A7 line of camera. So if you're not shooting with that camera, well, this cage probably isn't for you. So that pretty much summarizes everything that I like and don't like about this cage. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay guys, so now we're gonna take a look at Camera's SOCOM video shoulder rig. If you're looking for something that's built like a tank and it's gonna last you for years, and you're also looking for that lighter setup with probably just a camera, a microphone, and maybe a viewfinder on the back, this is probably the rig you'll want. So at the time of the video, this is priced right at $229, which is probably gonna be in most of your guys' price range. Um, just like I said, it's built like a tank. You can see here on the handles, there's plenty of mounting holes for a rig of this size. So if you're in a bind and you need to attach something to these handles, you could definitely do that. Some of the things I really like about this rig is this little pad in the back. Um, it's got nice cushion on it if you're pushing it up against your chest or even if you're throwing it on the shoulder like the good old fashioned way, um, it'll, it's gonna stay in place. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, the base plate seems to be well made. You can see on this rig there are scratches all over it because I have taken this thing around the world to motocross tracks, to video shoots, short films. I have done everything with this thing. So it has definitely been through the ringer and it's still holding up. Not that it really matters, but I actually think this rig looks pretty cool. I mean, it has the matching black and the, the chrome look with the red. It looks pretty wicked, but there are some design flaws with this shoulder rig. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the top here. So a documentary I did a couple years ago, I was throwing one camera, because that's all I had at the time, from a camera crane to a slider and then back to here. And there's no quick release system on here. And now you can buy aftermarket, you know, like quick release systems through Amazon or B&H. It would have been nice for them to create some kind of quick release system for this, but that's not a big deal because you can buy something else to make that work. Just something that they probably should have included. Now something that's a little bigger of a deal to me is let me take this rig off the tripod here. So as I go and start holding it up, everything's you know nice and fine, and I start getting to the chute, and all of a sudden these you know handles start moving inward or outward, you know whichever you know has the most force. Now you're probably like, okay, Lane, we'll just tighten them down, duh. All right, I literally have these nuts on the bottom <laughs> as tight as they will go, and they are not budging. The only way to get those nuts to move even further is to get an Allen key, throw it in there and tighten it down. So even once you get them cinched down, there is still that possibility. If you put it on the ground or something like that and still kind of bumping them over and in order to get them back in, you're gonna have to break out that Allen key. So if you're looking for quick access, you know, trying to attach things on and off of this, and eh, this may not be the best system for you. But there are ways to get around that. You could buy another handle system or you can just deal with it like I did. <laughs> I shot with this rig for many years and I still trust it and love it to this day. So I still give this shoulder rig a thumbs up. Yes, it does have a couple design flaws, but it's just stuff that you guys will either have to get around. You know, if you want to work it out, you can add other handles to it. You can add the quick release system. And then you're looking at pretty close to a flawless shoulder rig for right about $230 at the time making this video. So I think it's a really great shoulder rig for you guys starting out. 
and uh, do not shy away from Camar stuff. They have some really solid equipment out there. I'm not affiliated with them. It's just I've used a lot of their stuff. I love it. I trust it. And um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and move on. In front of me, we have Camar's uh, TK3 tank video cage. And let me tell you guys, putting tank in the name was a good choice because it is built like a tank. This thing has been everywhere with me, just like the video shoulder rig that they also make. And this is a great cage for the price, guys. I have taken this cage with me around the world, just like with the video shoulder rig. I have beaten it over the motocross tracks. It has gone through the mud. It has done everything with me. And this cage is still holding up really well. The one thing that I like the most about this design is actually just a tall cage look. You, you can put just about any DSLR in the market inside of this cage including the Sony a7 with the battery grip on it. So to me, that's a huge deal when I'm out on location, I can throw two batteries in there and I can stay shooting, you know, for an extra hour or so. You do lose, you know, the, the little battery drop out in the bottom whenever you have a grip attached. However, that never was a big deal to me, so I'm not gonna complain about it. Another thing that's pretty cool is you can actually detach you know, two of these rails or just one of them if you wanted, you know, it's, it's kind of awkward to hold both of these, you know, at the same time. Although I did it most of the time, you can take one of them out and hold the ones on the back if you're looking to be a little bit more lightweight. So you can see I have the FF3 follow focus attached to it. Um, this does not come with the cage, neither does the matte box. It's just something I purchased on top of this and it's stuff that I usually use with this cage rather than the video shoulder rig, so that's why you're seeing it here. Um, with this follow focus, you're looking at about $155 investment at the time of making this video, and for what you're getting, I would say this is probably the best bang for buck follow focus you can buy. Why? Because it's lightweight and it has a single rod design, meaning it's only going to attach to a single 15 millimeter rod. So. If you're trying to stay as lightweight as possible while still getting a really smooth pull, this is probably gonna be the follow focus for you. Now, moving on into the matte box. Um, it's got a pretty well construction build to it. Um, the, the flags, you know, they get the job done. They're hanging in there. The matte box does come with one four x four neutral density tray right there. Um, it also comes with this little donut that is a little hard to throw onto a lens, but you know, it works. Looking at the top handle, um, if you decide that you want the TK3 with the top handle, it's solid, it doesn't move, it doesn't rotate, it's a good grip, I'd say go ahead and get it. So while this may be the most ideal cage as far as pricing and features go, it also has a few disabilities, so let's go ahead and get into those. The first thing that I'm gonna point out is going to be this matte box flag. So the ones on the side aren't a big deal, but this flag on the top, I've got it cinched down as tight as it'll go, and I have multiple times had this thing fall down in the middle of a shot, and you get this ugly sound whenever you're in the middle of a shot, and that has ruined so many things for me. 75% of the time, I don't use flags anyways because I just need the neutral density filter, so I'll usually take them off. But those few shots where I need to block the sun or just a light source from the side or top, eh, well, I never really did rely on these flags. So, you know, that is a design flaw. The ones on the side aren't too bad because, you know, the way gravity works, you know, that's not normally a big deal. But still, just like I said, I don't, I wouldn't really rely on these flags. Unfortunately, another flaw about this is actually the follow focus system. While it's nice and lightweight and uses that single rod design, that's actually what's kind of messing up this entire rig. Whenever I have this follow focus attached and I have it angled off to the side in order to fit the some of the bigger 2.8 glass that I have on here, the problems that I run into is it makes this point at the bottom here. And that's a big deal whenever you're attaching this to a tripod. As you can see here, I have it on the Manfrotto 502 HD head and I'm just gonna try to detach it. I can't. It's not gonna come off of this head unless I detach the follow focus or if I straighten it up. But even if I straighten it up, you then have to make sure that the nut at the bottom isn't like 
pointing downwards that's going to get in the way of the plate. That's a massive design flaw. Um, something that they really didn't think about. Now, are there ways to get around this? Absolutely. You could add some kind of, you know, like extension system at the bottom of this case, you know, gap it another inch or so, and it would clear everything. And that's fine. It's just not something that I've ever used and I've never seen anything that I can adapt to the bottom. So the last flaw that I'm gonna point out isn't actually a design flaw at all. It's really just kind of something that was expected and it's actually just the weight. The weight of this cage is tremendous. Now yes, hence the word tank. Yes, I knew this rig was gonna be a very heavy cage, but you know, whenever you're out there on location shooting for hours, I mean, it's definitely gonna wear on your arms if you're doing a lot of handheld work. So as long as this is on a tripod, it's fine. Once again, you know, you have to look up you know, the maximum load capacity of your tripod legs and head and yada yada. So while there are a few design flaws with this cage, I have to say this still has my stamp of approval on it. I love this cage. I've used it for years. I have been brutal with it, putting it through the mud, motocross tracks, everything, and it has held up. Yes, it's heavy. Yes, there's a couple problems with the follow focus and this and that, but overall, this is still a very good camera cage and you have to consider the price point of it. So for a lot of you starting indie filmmakers out there, this might be a case for you to consider. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the last cage that I'm gonna talk about. In front of me, I have the Tilta 003A DSLR video rig. So coming in at a whopping $1,870 at the time of making this video, this rig screams professional. You are looking at super solid accessories on here, cage design, a lot of manufacturing and thought went into the making of this rig. Go ahead and starting off with the cage here, you're getting a lot of protection. If this were to fall off a rig for whatever reason, you're definitely getting a lot of protection on the top and sides here. It's just, it's built so solid. As, so looking at the base plate that your camera's gonna be attached to, it has almost like a bigger like Arca Swiss style base plate. Um, I don't actually know what it's called, but the coolest thing about this feature for most of us that's still shooting on DSLR and mirrorless systems is it has this um, camera back lever in the sense that like whenever you mount your camera to this base plate, um, it's not going to be moving around because as you know, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras only have that one hole at the bottom and that has bugged me for years. So whenever you throw this on there, you're not gonna get any kind of side-to-side -side motion from your camera. Looking at the top panel here, it is a very solid build. Um, the, the, the little levers on the side where you loosen and tighten them, they just, they're, they're so much easier than some of the other rigs like the cameras that I've had. They're so much easier to loosen and tighten without like getting loosened by themselves. I don't know if that makes sense, but this, this top handle has a couple mounting holes on the top and the sides and also in front. Um, it's just really solid and the grip doesn't twist and that's the biggest thing that bugs me and I have not had to worry about that with this rig. Looking at the follow focus on the side, if you were to buy this follow focus by itself, I believe you're looking at about a $600 investment but this came with this rig. And I have to admit guys, this is the best follow focus that I've ever used. I've got the whip on the side here and I just, I cannot explain how buttery smooth this is. But my favorite feature of this follow focus system is actually making your own hard stops. It's got these little knobs that you just loosen up and you can move them around to wherever you want, tighten them down, and then you just put hard stops in your lens. Whether you wanna set this up to where, you know, the left side of your lens stops here and the right side stops here, or if you just wanna mark it for a shot, you can do it because they also include these little like rubber washers on here that whenever they stop, you don't hear anything. And it's not like a tink or anything like that. It's kinda of like a soft, it's just a soft stop. It's just, you know, the little features in this rig are really awesome. Now this follow focus system is perfect for you guys that are shooting on the E-mount glass. Cause as you guys know, you know, the Canon and Nikon lenses, they have hard stops. E-mounts do not. They're not the, I believe the focus by wire system. So this 
follow focus system is perfect for that if you guys are trying to stay accurate with your focus pulls. Now moving on to the handles here. These handles are super solid. They're built like a tank. I'm telling you guys, I mean, you can just squeeze these and they're not going anywhere. They are attached through the rosette adapters. And as you guys know, those are super solid. They're not going anywhere. Um, you've got bigger levers here whenever you're trying to move these around. And every time I look at this cage, it looks like some kind of transformer. I mean, this, this cage just looks wicked. And it's just, it's built so strong. So these handles can be altered through the rosette adapters. You know, if you want to move it on the side or on the top, whatever you want, you can get it. And once you lock it in place, they are locked in place. There is no slipping with these hand grips. The matte box is one of the best features of this camera system because once again, if you're gonna try to buy this carbon fiber matte box, you know, outside of this rig, you're looking at about a $600 investment. And in here, you're gonna get two of the neutral density filter trays right here. They're four by four inch. And that's, that's a huge deal for me whenever I'm shooting with some of these mirrorless cameras and I'm shoot, trying to get, you know, that shallow depth of field while on location, you know, in a bright condition. If I'm trying to switch between two scenes, I can have two lighter neutral density filters in there rather than just one dark one like most other matte boxes have. So having two slots is pretty cool. The carbon fiber keeps it nice and lightweight. The flags, these are the best flags that I've ever used on any of the camera cages or rigs that I own. And that's just because whenever you lock them, they're locked down. This top flag has never moved in a shot. Anytime I'm trying to block out that sun and I throw that flag down, I know that it's not, that it's not gonna move and accidentally hit the top of my other flags and make that noise that happens and all the other shots that's happened with the cheap matte boxes. So also included with this rig is a little lens support here. This is great if you're throwing on one of those heavier telephoto lenses and you're just trying to give it a little extra support just to secure it on your camera body a little more. Another cool feature about this matte box is if you pull up on this knob, it has this slide out function. So if you're trying to swap out lenses or you're trying to take some accessories off or adjust them or whatever, man, having this slide out matte box helps so much instead of taking it off to remove the lens or whatnot. Now, while this may look a little bit ridiculous and overkill for something like a Sony a7, this is actually a really comfortable rig. The shoulder placement on here is flawless. I just, I absolutely love it. You throw your camera right up here next to your head and I usually put uh, one of those arms out here on the side and throw a monitor in front of me. I got my focus pulling right here. This is an awesome rig, guys, if you're trying to get something a little bit more professional, but something that's also going to last. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. Hopefully, I was able to help give you all some guidance towards your next camera cage purchase. And just like I stated at the beginning of the video, all four of these systems are systems that I own and I've used for several years, and I trust all of them. As you guys have also seen, they serve a different purpose, each and every one of them. This tilter rig here is my go-to like cinema rig setup for my short films and or you know like my higher end like paid shoots. Uh, while the smaller like Sony A7 tilter rig that's perfect for my on location stuff where I'm gonna be you know hand holding it for a while and the camera systems are perfect for those of you that are starting out and just looking for a nice solid rig that's gonna fit just about any DSLR on the market. So. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you have not. And um, just stay tuned for more videos that I'm going to be releasing soon. As always, I'm Lane McCall.